Hey guys, um, so this video is going to be about um, yoke sweaters and specifically bottom up yoke. So I, <laughs> I have this book called The Opinionated Knitter by Elizabeth Zimmerman. Uh, Elizabeth Zimmerman is one of the best knitters of all time and best um, designers for knitwear and patterns and she's so cool. But anyways, I would I have all of her books and she's amazing. But anyways, so I'm going to be making this sweater um, from this book. Uh, and I thought about, so the patterns work bottom up. And I have only made yoke sweaters top down before. Um, and I'm more comfortable with that. So I thought, oh, I'll just change around the pattern and I'll do it top down. Then I thought, you know, this would be a great opportunity to um, to troubleshoot with you guys about making uh, yoke sweaters and any sweater bottom up. Um, so, and I really not a fan of doing bottom up, but maybe I will like it after I start doing this. So, right now, the, the pattern, if you're interested in buying this book or this pattern, I think it's probably on Ravelry, but anyways, it's in this opinionated knitter book, and um, this is called Fair Isle Yoke Sweater Made Entirely on Circular Needles. And yeah, so first what you are going to start with is casting on all of your bottom stitches. So I actually decided to cast on, um, well, the, the pattern uses size... It doesn't use any sizes. Okay, yeah, the pattern, um, oh yeah, it does. Okay, it specifies a size 2 and a size 4. So size 2 would be ribbing, size 4 is for the body. So I'm using a um, soft weight yarn and, or is it soft weight? Yeah, okay. I'm using a soft weight yarn and, um, yeah. Um, There's a on a western plain, it serves a hundred ships a day, lonely sailors pass the time away, talking about their homes. There's a girl in this harbor town, and she works, laying whiskey down, they say Brandon, that you know. Sport weight. I'm using a sport weight yarn and uh, I cast it on 188 stitches. So the pattern specifies 200, but since I'm using a bigger, um, bigger needle, I'm going to do 188 and the pattern is like six stitches. So you can increase or decrease by six stitches to give you the, um, your desired width. So yeah. Right now I'm just here on the cuff, so I'm going to knit the cuff, and then once I'm done knitting the cuff, I'm going to increase all the way around to make it kind of come out a little bit, and then I'll knit the body, um, and then as you can see, it's kind of constructed like this. And I'll be back. Hey, so I am back with this Elizabeth Zimmerman um, bottom-up yoke sweater. Um, I think this is where I'm at right now. I also have the other sleeve, so... I'm ready to start the yoke. Um, it looks really short, but I just made the sleeves come along. It's kind of a little bit cropped, but it's not that cropped. Um, so yeah, I also I added like little edging on the sleeves with a section of the color work from the yoke, um, and then on the bottom of the um, body. So right now I am trying to combine them to start the yoke. Um, and I think it is safe to say that I will never do a yoke sweater like this ever again. Um, <laughs> it's kind of horrific, um, but it's fine. Uh, what you have to do is put a section of the inside of the sleeves and either side of the body um, stitches on stitch holders or like scrap yarn and then knit like all the way around and then sew the armpits together. Um, it's not my favorite method, 
but yeah, that's where I'm at right now. Um, currently I'm knitting on the back. I just did one sleeve. Oh, put this on to show you. I just did one sleeve. Um, and now I'm making my way over to the other. What I'm going to do, so I'm using a different amount of stitches um, for the underarm than the pattern dictates because I have a larger gauge. So right now I am working with Wool the Andes, Knit Picks Wool the Andes Sport Weight on a size 7 needle. One, two, three, five, six, seven. So my gauge is slightly larger. Um, so I just proportioned out the different parts of the pattern. Um, so yeah. So I put the, these stitches, so the inside of the body and the, um, the arm, on stitch holders. And what I'm going to do is just knit from the body. Okay, so just continue knitting onto the sleeve. And it gets a little bit, oh, gets a little bit tight. It's whatever. And body are sewn are knitted together, and so it'll kind of sit like that. Um, because now I have to do the yoke, which is the fun part, in my opinion. Um, hey guys, so I'm back with the completed sweater. I didn't bother to check in while I was working on the yoke because it went by so fast. Um, but yeah. Very quick sweater. Honestly, the bottom up, I don't really mind as much as I thought I would. It is, so whenever you first join the body to the sleeve, it is kind of tight the first couple rounds, but it's not that big of a deal. Um, and once you get moving on the yoke, it goes by really fast. The only thing I dislike about this uh, bottom up method of making a yoke sweater is that you can't tell, like, um, how long the body is on you or like the sleeves I mean you can compare it to other sweaters and like kind of hold it up to you or whatever but it's not as good as putting on the sweater from the top that you're working from top down you can kind of like adjust it more whereas you kind of have to rely at least for me you have to rely more heavily on the pattern to be sure that your measurements are correct and stuff like that um, but this is the end result honestly so here are some changes that I made from Elizabeth Zimmerman's original pattern. So one, uh, in the pattern it said to make the sleeves 22 inches long. I made them 19 inches long and they're extremely long. Like they they go over my, it's like, it's like that. This is like a little bit longer than I would even want a sleeve to be. So I would not make them 22 inches long. I don't know what, <laughs> in what case that would work. Um, and then I also added this little edging right here. And at the bottom of the sweater um, that I took from the yoke pattern, I really like the colors that I chose to use. I modeled them off of one of the examples in the opinionated knitter box. And yeah, this sweater took about two weeks to complete. Um, it was pretty quick and um, now it's all blocked and it I knitted it um, with Knit Picks Wool of the Andes sport weight on a the ribbing I did on a four and the body I did on a seven so it's a little bit loose but I am very pleased with it. So the next knitting pattern that I am going to embark on or I have already embarked on is a color work cardigan so I spent a really long time like two hours charting it and I'm already 
feel a little bit weird about how it's turning out. <laughs> but this is my bad chart, and then this right here is my good chart. But so this is, uh, I have like a bunch of different colors of wool dandies, Nimpix wool dandies. So I am working on that. It's connected to all these balls of yarn. I have like, I think like 10 different colors that I want to use right now, and they're all, it's like three different shades of brown two different shades of green and then one this this pink and then a dark red like a reddish pink um so here's this here's where i'm at right now i'm working from bottom up but it's not a yoke so i'm not bothered by it this is just the bottom oh my god it's wearing like 80 years old this is this is just the bottom of the ribbing so this will be like right here but this is pretty wide for ribbing, um, which is exactly what I want since it's going to be a cardigan. You can see the steak right there that I'm working. Um, it's going to be a cardigan, and I, my goal is to make it bulky. I've only ever made one bulky thing before because I always end up like just like getting lazy and making things to fit me. Um, but then I can't like wear stuff, oh, wear it over stuff, and like whatever. This cardigan is going to be bulky, but that means it's going to take an insanely long amount of time because it is all going to be color work so as you can see I have my two color ribbing down actually it's I have two colors in the knit and then one in the fall so it's three colors and then I started working so I worked one pattern today that's with this red I really don't like how these go together but I'm hoping that one of the later patterns I worked the red with the pink together and I'm hoping that they will look a little bit nicer together because these colors look really good together so if you pretend that that's not there, it might be great. But I've been telling myself that if all spells and I don't like how it looks, I can just graft it out later, which is like a huge pain in the ass. Like, but I'd rather do that now <laughs> than deal with it um, because I already finished fitting it. But yeah, we'll see. It might end up looking fine. And I have a really long way to go on this cardigan, but I started it two days ago and this I already have like four, about four, four and a half inches done. And this whole thing itself is like 35 inches or something like that. So it's moving along. And yes, this is my pattern that I have written for it uh, right now. And it's extremely basic, but it's just, I'm just going to work it um, from bottom up and then divide it. Um, divide the stitches by the sleeve, decrease at the sleeve, work it up to the neckline, and then work the fronts and the backs, put a neckline on it, pick up the stitches, make sleeves. So it'll be pretty basic, but hopefully it's going to be beautiful. So I also wanted to take the time in this video to talk about some of my some of the life lessons that knitting has taught me. Um, so yeah, you may be looking at this and be like, oh my god, she's gonna knit all this fucking shit in one cardigan and thinks it's gonna take like blah blah blah. This is insane. Well, it's not insane. Not one because I can knit a sweater in like two weeks, but this sweater is gonna be much more complex than this one. Um, but because everything that I start, I know that if I like it and I want to continue working on it, it will eventually get done. So this is like the overarching life lesson that knitting has taught me is that everything is finite. So I mean that in like many ways, like in the way that this thing that I'm knitting is probably like will eventually be gone, will eventually degrade <laughs> will eventually be set on fire or like something will happen to it it will not exist forever but it will also exist much longer i think slash hope than i will um which is kind of like a really cool thing about knitting is being able to make something that will last a really long time and connect you to it it not only connects you to people in the past that have knitted or people in your life that knit but people in the future that will knit or people in the future that will be cold and need sweaters and stuff like that. So there's something about that that's really cool. But yeah, I can like start something and think, I don't think about it in terms like, oh, this is going to take fucking forever. I think about it in terms of like, okay, 
if I get one inch done a day and it's gonna be like 35 inches, I can get it done in less than two months. So, which is like, wow. And realistically, it might even take me longer than that. I mean, kind of probably not, but like it could take me like a year and still a year, it has an end, right? So, and like, there's a, even though there's like thousands of stitches in something like this, it's still a finite amount. Um, it's not infinite and it's not impossible because like with all things in life, I think it's just like, you know, if you continue working at it, it has to end just like, because life has to end. So that's kind of like a piece of knitting wisdom from a 21 year old knitter. But I have been knitting for like 10 years, like, yeah, so. Okay, another great thing that knitting, about knitting, not only does it teach you about the, um, how do I say that? Not only does it teach you about the um, finite nature of life, it also teaches you about um, you know, a really deep and complex history of women's work and women's like roles in society. Um, so I feel like there's something special about being able to participate in this type of history. Um, like being able to, being able to do this thing that so many people have done before me that so many people may not notice or may not think is very important, but to me is incredibly important. Something about that is really interesting. Um, yeah, knitting is just like, like no word. Well, I'll try to have words. It's extremely important to me because it gives me a sense of context and purpose and belonging. Um, I think as an, as an American, uh, it's kind of like our nature, not our nature, but we're like kind of predisposed, I feel, to um, having these odd senses of belonging, uh, like cultural belonging, since, uh, I mean, unless you're a Native American, you're kind of always, I don't know, not surrounded by a culture like I mean yes you're like if you're like me and you live in a predominantly white area you're surrounded by other white people but it doesn't really mean much whenever you think about cultural heritage and you think about cultural traditions and like deriving value from group belonging related to culture um so whenever I think about like so half of my family is Scottish, think about the traditions of knitting in Scotland and the traditions of knitting in the Shetland Islands and all these different um, ways to construct Ganges and like different ferrile patterns and things that people have been knitting into their sweaters for like so many years. Um, there's something about that that is, it's really special to me and to be able to continue that on even though I'm not in that place, like my family does not live in Scotland, obviously. Um, there's something about that that's special. Yeah, I could ramble on, I guess, about this type of stuff for a while. Um, but yeah, it's very cool. Hey guys, so this is like actually several months later, but I wanted to show you my final project of the Colorwork Cardigan. So I started it in June and I did not finish until September, which is like a really long time to be working on a project for me. Um, it took literally more time than any knitted thing I've ever made. And it is literally the most intricate thing I have ever made and probably will ever make for a long time. <laughs> probably for at least a year. <laughs> I don't think I'll try and do something this intricate. Um, but yeah, 
still shiny. Super pleased with this cardigan. I even put in buttonholes. This is something if you have any tips about troubleshooting, putting buttonholes in a cardigan with two color ribbing. What is, how do you do that? I had to like make specific, because I did the yarn overs in the ribbing, but it doesn't really make sense because there's two colors, so the other color like wraps over your yarn. It's like really convoluted. Um, and still, the buttonholes are kind of messed up. But it's okay. It's not a you can see, it's like really good length for me. Um, the sleeves are also a nice length for me. Not too long. They like come right up to my this little bun, which I like. Um, Yeah, this is like this was a huge project and not only like I put in my other video all of like a two hour long like short so I made it like six times as fast but or probably more than six but it was like a two hour long video of me weaving in all the ends of this cardigan because it had so many ends here and in the sleeve and on the edges and in the bottom and also because it's so many different colors all the way along each inside of each sleeve there is so many ends um, from finishing the different colors um, it was kind of a nightmare but I am really proud of it because I charted it all myself I did the pattern basically I'm I don't know I'm really excited and I feel like this could lead to a lot of other really cool projects um, but yeah, I did it all with Knit Picks Sport Weight, 100% wool, uh, and the body is on a 4, and the ribbing is on a 2, so it's extremely dense, especially because it's color work. So we know that whenever you're doing color work, it's basically like you side down a needle because it gets tighter, unless you're like really good at keeping your tension, but it's just like it just gets tighter because there's two yarns working at the same time. Um, or sometimes three, but usually that's like disgusting. Two yards at a time is perfect. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you saw in the video, but whenever I was working with the two colors, it's best if you have it like wrapped around both of your, all like two, two fingers on each, and then you're knitting like continental and then English, so you can knit both colors at the same time. Um, but yeah, I'm super pleased, and yeah, since I knitted the body on a four, and it's two colors, it's and it's four-way yarn, it's like extremely thick. This is like a super, super warm garment. Um, yeah, so I'm pleased with it.